Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. Today is Tuesday, May 24th. I'm Stephanie Haney and I am here with your top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Thank you for being here for the stories that matter most to you here in Northeast Ohio. These are the stories that you are clicking on reading and sharing from our website and from our app. And we start off with a big story today. We now know more about what people can expect to see in tonight's HBO Real Sports episode with Soledad O'Brien when the conversation turns to two women who are accusing Cleveland Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson of sexual assault. Now Watson did, did turn down the opportunity to have a conversation for this show, which is his right, and he has maintained that he has done nothing wrong. But who we will hear from are Ashley Solis, and Kyla Hayes, two of the women accusing him of sexual misconduct during massages. And we will also hear from one of Deshaun Watson's attorneys, Leah Graham, who had an interview with Soledad O'Brien. What we'll hear from the women in these expert excerpts that were provided by HBO, we now know that we'll hear Ashley Solis detailing specifically, and I warn you, the uh, following accounts that I am about to summarize for you are disturbing. They might be triggering for women who have or anyone who has dealt with sexual assault and they are not gratuitous, but they do talk about sexual assault and sexual encounters. So Ashley will describe how she believes that Deshaun Watson purposely put his private parts on her hand and how she then pulled her hand away and told him that she did not want to do this anymore, that she was done and started crying in that moment. We'll also hear from Kyla Hayes, who describes how she says Watson directed her massage in order to purposely touch her with his private parts as well, and also talks about a moment where she says that he climaxed in that situation. Now, Watson denies any impropriety or sexual contact with any kind of any kind with either Ashley or Kyla. There's also a disturbing message that Ashley says Deshaun Watson left her with. She said that he told her, I know you have a career to protect, and I know you don't want anyone messing with it, just like I don't want anyone messing with mine. And she said at that moment, she got scared. And when asked why, she said it was because it sounded like a threat. Now, Watson specifically denies that that exchange took place. We'll also hear their reaction to the $230 million contract, the record contract from the Cleveland Browns for Watson and their feelings on that, with Ashley saying that she feels like it shows that no one cares, that he can run and throw, and that's all that anyone cares about. And Kyla talks about how it was sickening to her and how she describes it as a reward for bad behavior. Tony Busby, who is the attorney for Watson's accusers, said this, I don't think the team cares about what Deshaun Watson may have done in the massage session, and based on my personal experience with the NFL, I don't think they care either. Now. As a reminder, Watson has denied any wrongdoing with the 22 women who have accused him of sexual assault. And then there will also be a question and answer session with Leah Graham, one of Watson's attorneys. In that conversation, Soledad O'Brien will ask Graham about the fact that it's 22 different women who have accused Watson. And Graham responds by saying it's 22 women. It's one lawyer, and she says that there was only one lawyer who was willing to take these cases. She describes Mr. Busby as someone who is looking for social media clout and merit, and to quite frankly, as she puts it, get on shows like HBO Real Sports. Soledad O'Brien goes on to talk about admitted consensual sexual encounters between Watson and three people who have been associated with the massage practice. And Graham responds to that saying that everywhere he went, he did only seek a massage and that the people that he did have consensual activity with, those people initiated that after the massage was completed. Graham goes on to say that he does not have any regrets, as he said in his depositions last week. And she says the real question is, what is their evidence of any guilt? So we will certainly get a clearer picture tonight on HBO Real Sports, but those are the excerpts that we have been provided by HBO. Again, that'll be tonight at 10 p.m. on HBO platforms. We're also learning now that Dwayne Hask Haskins was intoxicated when he was hit and killed on a Florida highway. The former Ohio State quarterback was legally drunk and had taken drugs before he was hit on interstate 595 near Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport 
in Florida. That was just before dawn on April 9th. He had been in South Florida with some of the Steelers teammates, and the report says that he had gone to dinner with the teammates and then to a club with a friend or a cousin, possibly in the Miami area. Then they got into an argument and they separated. And he had been on the phone with his wife, Calabria, and she was back in Pittsburgh before he got hit. He said he had ran out of gas. She called 911 because he wasn't calling back and responding to her calls. And then we later learned that he was hit and killed on the highway just before dawn on April 9th. And the Broward County Medical Examiner's Office said that his blood alcohol content was 0 0.2 which is 2.5 times the legal limit for driving, which is 0.08 in the state of Florida. Experts say that for Haskins, who was 230 pounds, he would have needed at least 10 drinks to reach that level. And he also had the strong painkiller ketamine in his system and its metabolite norketamine in his system. Now, that drug can be prescribed by a doctor, but it can also be used, abused recreationally. And the report does not say why he had it in his system. And there is some resolution in the case of Giaga's child today. The woman who was found guilty in the murder of that decades-old case has been sentenced to life in prison. She'll be eligible for parole in 15 years. The judge sentencing the case was David Andre, and he told her that her freedom was over, talked about how she had bought 29 years of normal life where she had the chance to get married, raise children, and do some good work, but that ultimately she had gained that time, he said, on the back of a helpless infant. And that time is now over. She was found guilty of murder, but not aggravated murder for the 1993 dumping of the newborn baby boy in the woods along Sidley Road. That case had been cold for years until June of 2019 until authorities said that she was identified through familial DNA that was matched to that of Giaga's child. Now we have an update in the Lake Catholic lacrosse issue. We do know now that the coach we do now know, excuse me, that the coach has resigned. Our 3 News Marissa Science from the investigative team confirmed that yesterday. Chris Hastings is his name and he confirmed to her or he said to her that he did not show up until that game against Orange where that student is accused of having a swastika painted on his leg until partway through the first quarter. The assistant coach was there to start the game. The assistant coach has also resigned. Hastings said he did not know about the swastika being on the player's leg until the Orange Orange coach said something to him, and that was at the end of the game. Hastings told Signs that he was a part-time employee at the school. He was not a teacher, and he has also resigned from coaching the soccer team. Now we turn to a public health issue. You may have heard that there has been a recall on peanut butter products. So GIF has voluntarily recalled peanut butter products. This is because there's a multi-state outbreak of salmonella poisoning that has been linked to peanut butter products. So if you're trying to figure out whether your product is in the recall, what you need to look at is the lot number. And we have an article about this on WKYC.com. It's not the barcode. You're going to look for the best if used by date, and then you'll find the date, and then you'll find a string of numbers. In that string of numbers, the first seven numbers, if they end in 425, that's how you know one of your products is part of that recall. Now, if that's a bit complicated for you, don't worry. There's also a form online that you can fill out. Customers that have the GIF products can go to the GIF website, which we have linked at WKYC.com, and you can put in that lot code, and it will tell you if your item is part of that recall. And if you do that, you'll get a coupon for a replacement, and that'll come in about six weeks. If you don't want to do that, you can take your product to many of the major grocery stores in the area and they are saying they are offering full refunds for the product if you don't want to wait for that coupon for a new product. So some of those include Costco, Meyer, Publix, Giant Eagle, and Food Lion stores. And we have more information on that on WKYC.com. Now to some good news. The 2022 NBA All-Star Game provided Northeast Ohio with a big economic impact. We've got the report in from the Greater Cleveland's Sports Commission. It was over February 18th through the 20th. There was $141.4 million in direct spending with a total economic impact of almost $250 million. We love to see that money coming here into Cleveland. About 122,000 people attended the event from 45 states and 24 countries. Over 3,400 news outlets worldwide mentioned Cleveland alongside the All-Star Game between January 1st to February 28th, so that's two months. 
of spotlight and coverage on our fair city here in Cleveland. The game was broadcast in 215 countries or territories in 60 languages and generated 223 million views on Instagram on All-Star Sunday. And for the Instagram crowd, that is the highest single day total for Instagram in over two years. Love to see that. Love to see that impact here in Cleveland. Speaking of Instagram, the Three Things to Know podcast is back this week, and it is on Instagram. You can find that on the WKYC Instagram page. We've got a new look. It's a good look. Shout out to Abby here in our marketing team and photographer Stephanie Weaver for helping out with the photos. It's got a new look, so you can see the new design. And what we are talking about on this updated design of the Three Things to Know podcast is an update to the five love languages. We previously had Dr. Gary Chapman on the podcast, and he talked about the five love languages, which he coined in the 1980s. He's got a book, a best-selling book that talks all about him. Had him on the podcast. Well, now there's an update to that. There's a company called Truity that does research, and they did an independent study of over 500,000 people to see if there's a more modern set of love styles. And they did. They came up with seven modern love styles. Those seven, I'll give you the rundown. Activity, appreciation, emotional, financial, intellectual, physical, and practical, which is an update to the five original love languages, which are words of information, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. So there is some overlap between the two, but also some interesting new takes on these seven modern love styles. And I talked through them with a friend of the show, It's Just Lunch Cleveland matchmaker Natalie Fry. She's been on the show several times. She's a great, uh, great source of information on all things love and romance and relationships, not necessarily romantic. So you're going to want to check that out. It's on the WKYC YouTube page on WKYC.com on all your favorite podcast platforms and also on Instagram. All right, that's it for your three news now update today for Tuesday, May 24th. I will see you back here tomorrow with more three news now.